everyone to the Jared Grebner Show. This is Scott Kirker along with Metamore head coach Jared Grebner. Coach, uh, last Friday night uh, got to come back to Malone Field. Uh, once again, always nice to be home. Uh, a lot better than it was the first week. Um, but you played host to a, a kind of a struggling um, East Peoria football team. I will say this, East Peoria played hard the entire game. They played hard from you know that first kickoff to the last whistle, and you got to give them credit for that. You know their quarterback was a good ball player. You know he never gave up. He was good scrambling, but our kids came out with a business-like attitude, yeah. and uh, they were ready to play. Uh, you know I, I thought off. We'll start offensively first. I thought offensively, you guys came out that very first play. They were ready for belly, beer, something in the middle. Mm -hmm. And you guys faked it, play action pass, and uh, Connor hit your nephew, uh, Caden Hartnett down the sideline for what, a 51 yard pass? Pass play for touchdown, one play, one touchdown. Uh, that was awfully nice. That was one thing that uh, Coach Delinsky and Coach Simmons emphasized this week was, uh, you know, our fade routes, uh, actually in between some of our running plays and some of our pass emphasis, We'd go play action, and then right after that, we would just practice the fade uh, to one of the receivers, and we'd just alternate. Uh, we give the Connor the ability to call a fade, uh, kind of a little run pass option there, uh, based on pre-snap reads, and he saw what he liked as far as the matchup and as far as alignment, and he was able to hit Caden in stride. Uh, it was an awfully nice play. He went up uh, eight, and I think got the two-point conversion, I believe, uh, Connor ran it in for the two-point conversion. Uh, you went up 8 nothing early. And from that point on, I thought you guys, well, you had control from the from the outset of the game. But defensively and, and particularly offensively, you really clicked. And you expect to do that in games like that. But you don't always, that doesn't always happen. But your kids did Friday night. Mm -hmm. And from the opening kickoff return, you know, Sam Ole got us a uh, great field position from the start. Uh, that kind of set the tone for the rest of the game. Offense was able to get the big play, and then defense was able to continue to get stops. Yeah, that was uh, a very, uh, really good way to get things started. You know, you, you, you want to jump on teams early like that, and you certainly did that. And, like, we always just keep saying that we can't beat ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so that was one thing that uh, we really stressed was uh, not tripping over our own feet. and. On Friday night, we were able to do that for the most part, uh, to kind of just get out of our own way, uh, let things happen, and take what they gave us. You mentioned before we went on the air about how, you know, at least for Metamora, it was a record for the most players to catch a ball. You had 11 receivers, 11 different kids caught passes in that game Friday night. And that is just a credit to all of our kids. You know, we have tremendous athletes. We were able to spread the wealth. Uh, show the talents of all the individuals out there and utilize them in ways that can benefit the team. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it, was a, it was a great night. Uh, I think you had about six different runners that carried the ball for you also. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I believe there was six. Uh, Aiden Rice was able to lead us in carries. Uh, you know, he had nine. I believe Ethan Petrie had five maybe six, uh, Garrett Taylor had five, Connor Willerton had five, and so we were able to, you know, divvy up the run game accordingly and then, uh, you know, spread it out in the passing game. And so it was a good team effort all around. Yeah, it was awfully, and, and we talked about it, you know, in your post-game interview Friday night, but uh, Aiden Rice, you know, came off that really bad injury when he was a sophomore and uh, got a touchdown, and you'd have thought we, won a conference title. The sideline was going nuts. The, the players on the field were going crazy. You, you knew that, that that meant something to him. And a senior uh, who fought his way back and uh, got a touchdown on Malone Field. He's a kid that he's put in the time. Uh, you know, he gives us a good look and scout uh, during practice. And you know, everybody wanted to make sure he got in the end zone because as a senior, like I mentioned, he's put in the time, he's put in the effort. And uh, to come back from what he came back from was just a great moment to see for our program. Yeah, that, that was a special part of that night was, was him getting a touchdown and uh, had some really nice carries, uh, ran hard, 
And uh, one of the drives, I think the one that he scored on was kind of the Aiden Rice drive because I think he had, I think you had, I think it was a five play drive and I think he had all but one <laughs> carry in that whole yeah. drive. <laughs> and he moved from fullback to wing in that series. Uh, we got him the ball on uh, different types of plays and, you know, he's run enough different positions where he can handle the workload from, you know, all different sorts. And, uh, if you switch now over to the, the, the defensive side, uh, I, I thought your kids really uh, kind of put the clamps down on them early, uh, took everything away from them. Uh, I don't think they got a first down until midway through the second quarter. Uh, they did have one, I think, on a penalty, mm -hmm. but other than that, um, you, had, you gave them no first downs. Uh, they got a touchdown late in the game, um, but it was... Uh, you know, it, it, you got to give them credit. They had a good play. Mm -hmm. And you know, when, on that particular play, we we were in man and we kind of ran into each other and almost picked ourselves a little <laughs> bit. Uh, you'd always like to keep that shutout up on the board, but it wasn't meant to be. Uh, you know, they kept playing to the end, um, and it was just one of those things that we're going to learn from. You know, we always take something from the game, and uh, but to start off the game, I thought uh, we had a goal going in of. A certain number of sacks, a certain number number of tackles for a loss. We wanted to be the aggressor out there, and I thought our kids rose to the challenge. Yeah, I, I thought so too. I, I thought your guys up front did a great job. The Minor brothers are always <laughs> in the middle of everything that happens good for your defense, mm -hmm. um, and you know your linebacking core with Garrett Taylor and, and uh, uh, Brian Kennard and uh, T.J. Rising. And um, logged in. logged in, and we even you know rotate uh, Shuda with Kanar in there, and that just gives us an added dimension. And you know those guys do it real well uh, up front, you know, rotating in the nose between Nate Johnston and uh, Ben Wallace and some of the bigger guys. And then we can go quick if we want to. Yeah. You know, we can plug in Carson Irvin uh, at nose, but Carson also plays end for us, uh, <laughs> along with the Minor brothers. And Owen Keenan comes in and gives us uh, another thicker body in there. Logan Cole, and so you know, there's a whole bunch of people that were able to plug in, keep guys fresh, uh, get game experience uh, for games on down the road. Yeah, it, it's been nice how you've been able to rotate those guys in. And keep everybody fresh and that is going to pay dividends down the road. Um, I, I thought overall you guys did some really nice things. You even got some extra points on some kicks. It, it, it was nice to see some uh, go through. Uh, Ryan's been working really hard in Ryan practice. Morgan. Yes, Ryan Morgan's been working hard in practice. Uh, he was able to split those uprights. Uh, Connor came in and changed that up as far as holding goes. Uh, and it seems like we're a little bit more comfortable uh, back there with him. Uh, but that's, you know, a game that we want to you know, get a little bit more consistent with. And uh, I think we took a step in the right direction on Friday. Right. Yeah, you know, uh, you only have to get 50% of your two-point conversions, but it's also very nice to know that you can have a guy back there. He's not going to have to kick many field goals. I mean, we had uh, Brendan Van Meegum, who was, you know, all everything, mm -hmm. kicker. I think he only had what two. Well, he had, he had one real big one. Yeah, he, he had, had one in that state championship. Uh, then he had a, maybe only two or three others the rest of his career. Correct, and you know, and and he was a four-year kicker, yeah. and and so uh, and when we get in down there, we like to score touchdowns, and so if we can just put that extra point up there on the board, you know, we'll be good with that. Uh, when you look now at the rest of your conference opponents, you're you're three and zero in on the season. You're one and zero in the middle line. I but the heart of your Middle Illini Conference, you have Limestone coming up, and then you have uh, Dunlap, Morton, Peak in Washington, and Canton. Uh, the heart and the meat of that conference is yet to be played, but you're lining yourself up really nicely for that stretch run. The Middle Illini Conference is always, you know, a tough gauntlet to go through. Um, you know, we have Limestone this week. You know, that's going to be another challenge. And you know we're just going to have to keep taking it one day at a time, one game at a time, and just uh, try and beat the po the opponent that's in front of us. Um, Limestone uh, has a, a, a very good fullback. In, I think it's Frank Driscoll. Correct. Coming in, uh, you, you'll go to their place. It always seems to be tough to go to Limestone and play a really 
good game. We've had some slow starts there. Um, it's just a different atmosphere uh, for some reason, and it'll, sometimes it'll take us a little bit to get started. Um, but our kids have been, you know, handling things with a business-like attitude, like we talked about beforehand. Uh, we've started to have seniors step up, so um, there's no doubt in my mind that we'll be ready to go on Friday night. Yeah, and I, and I have no doubt about that. It's just, you know, now you just got to keep getting a little bit better each week, and as long as that keeps happening. You know, your, your toughest games are yet to be played, um, but your best football is yet to be played, too. Absolutely, and we keep just trying to hone in on what we're good at uh, and get even better at it, and then also, you know, expand the offense just a little bit uh, to keep people honest, uh, to kind of make sure that we're utilizing all of our weapons appropriately, mm -hmm. uh, where we can't key in on one thing, whether it's the running back, the quarterback, uh, some of our wide receivers, and just keep people off balance. And then defensively, uh, it's about understanding our personnel, uh, who can we utilize as maybe a shutdown corner, or a blitzing linebacker, or you know, a rush end, or whoever that may be, and just putting uh, our personnel in the right places to succeed. I, I thought you've done a really good job offensively getting the ball to your playmakers. Um, it seems like, you know, every every single play has been to a playmaker, somebody that is, you know, our, uh, one of your better football players. You've done a really good job of that this year. We're to the point now where uh, teams are going to have to respect, you know, wide receivers, slot receivers, tight ends, mm -hmm. backs, and that's what we kind of want to get to where, you know, they just can't say, all right, you know, quarterback, fullback, quarterback, fullback, every mm -hmm. single time, where they're going to have to, you know, split a linebacker or widen a linebacker out a little bit in order to respect it. And if they don't, then we're going to have to be able to take advantage of it. And then if they keep spreading that, those backers out a little bit, Ethan Petrie and Garrett Taylor are going to see some wide lanes. And, and, you know, that's part of it. You know, Are we able to utilize the whole field or and make them stretch it, everything out as well? And then can we gash them wherever they leave a little bit of a weakness? I, I thought the other thing, too, um, that's been pretty evident, we noticed it quite a bit in the spring, but I think it's really been evident this year because you've been outsized a little bit especially when you went up and played with South Fruit, the physicality of your kids up front has been um, very good. I, I think you've got to be very pleased with how physical your kids have been. And part of that's, uh, you know, Coach Otto does a great job with those guys. Uh, Coach Elbert on the defensive side and Coach Kassab, uh does a wonderful job with them. You know, they work a lot with footwork. They work a lot with jamming. They work a lot with leverage, you know, and being able to have athletes play with great leverage, uh, you know, is a strength of ours. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's that's been a key, and that's going to be really important because you, you've all. Not only do you have some good teams coming up, but those teams have some size. Pekin is very big up front, um, so you're going to have to, you know, have some kids that are physical, play with a high motor, um, and you're heading in that direction because you've gotten a little more physical every week. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on is, you know, you're, you're through week three, you're a third of the way through the season, and your program hadn't lost yet. That's that's a credit to the kids, to all the parents, you know, for getting them here on practice. I, I know sometimes it's always not easy uh, making it here on time, um, but that just takes dedication from the whole community, and we've had that so far. Uh, we've been fortunate to have some breaks go our way. Um, you know, with some of the games, you know, there's been some of the games that we've been down in. Mm -hmm. you know, the JV game versus LaSalle Peru, we were down a, a little bit. You know, the freshman game versus LaSalle Peru, uh, we got uh, down in. And our kids kept fighting uh, no matter what. And they knew that if they stuck together, they'd persevere. And, you know, we've been fortunate to come out on top. Uh, you know, when you look at the, the freshmen, you know, they, they started off the season with a nice win over uh, a pretty solid Notre Dame team. Um, and then the game you mentioned about uh, the freshman up in uh, LaSalle Peru, you suffered some injuries, mm -hmm. and it doesn't seem to matter who you've been or who's gotten injured. 
it's been kind of a plug and play with those kids because they lost, I believe, what six players in yeah, that game. Yeah, and it wasn't for an extended period of time, but they were down about six players going into that normal West game that they picked up, and they were still able to come out uh, with a victory versus oh. them. Uh, they played pretty well for the most part. You know, they always have their hiccups. Uh, absolutely, you're gonna and you're gonna expect that, but. Uh, the next guy came in and everybody played well. Yeah, you know what, Al McGuire, the old basketball analyst, the old basketball coach at Marquette, you know what he always said about freshmen, the best thing about freshmen? Is that become sophomores? Is that become sophomores. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, but and then, it, you know, you, you, you played, like you said, your sophomores played uh, Normal West this past Thursday night, got a nice win, 22-14? Yes, it was, 22-14. Um, somebody, I'm not sure what his name was now, Return the opening kickoff. Uh, you might know him. His name might elude me right now. But, uh, we were fortunate to have some good blocking up front. Um, you know, that freshman team—they're starting to kind of come into their own, both offensively and defensively. Um, you know, the line starting to play better and feel more comfortable, and so we're happy with how their things are progressing. You know, Coach Kurt and uh, <laughs> Coach Luke are doing a great job with those guys, and we expect them to keep rolling. Um, and I, you know, um, I, I think some of those kids are back this week that were injured against the mm -hmm. South Korea. Are they coming back this week against? Yeah, the some of them. Some of them will be able to come back. Uh, we'll have to see what some of the other uh, medical outlooks is as this as the week goes on. But uh, we're keeping our fingers crossed for a, a healthy team at every level. Your JV team had a very exciting uh, kind of come from behind win. 28-18 against LaSalle Peru last Monday morning, um, and that was a good LaSalle Peru JV team um, that came down here. They were big, they were physical, and you guys met the challenge there too. The you know LaSalle Peru, they always have guys that are going to be big, that are going to be physical. That's kind of just like that blue collar town that they come from, and. You know, they had a good quarterback that was an athlete. He actually saw some varsity action mm -hmm. when he had to come in and play against Morton due to cramping issues. Got a touchdown. Yeah, he did get a touchdown. And so uh, Coach Otto did a great job calling plays. You know, uh, we had, had some great pass plays that we were able to go up and snag, some sweeps we were able to get around on the corner. And, you know, even when we did have some turnovers and stuff like that, uh, Coach Keysweater had that defense ready to go, and they stepped up and were able to get some key stops when it mattered most. Uh, you know, l last year's freshman class was was uh, had some tough times at, at times they, mm -hmm. uh, because of injuries and different reasons, whatever. Um, and Kurt kept saying, "This is a better class. This is a better group of football players than what their record shows." Mm -hmm. And he was dead right. And sometimes it just takes that extra year. Uh, in the program, it takes an uh, extra year in the weight room, mm -hmm. and just to kind of get everybody comfortable uh, with, you know, what their role is on the team. And so far, you know, they've been meeting those expectations. Well, it, it, you got to keep it rolling, though. <laughs> you know, that's our goal every week is to keep it rolling, to get one step better, and keep that train moving down the tracks. Uh, you're 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 three and zero. You're one and zero in the Middle Illini Conference. Um, and it's always nice uh, to come up here and do these interviews on Sunday afternoon after a big win on Friday. It makes it a lot easier when you get a W. <laughs> yeah. you know, uh, yeah. We've never had to do it after a loss yet. Um, I don't want to know what that <laughs> feels like, but uh, we'll keep it going while we can. Well, congratulations. We'll see you Friday night in Limestone.